Hi, Eriji Boy, Eriji and today I am in the city of Metz in France to present you the new OM system OM5. So I'm going to get into details, also explain why my thumbnail says I did not expect this. So we're going we're gonna to see if it's positive, negative, or whatever. So let's start. First, I want to thank uh, OM System Europe. Uh, sometimes it's better to speak directly to uh, high-end people that get you directly the, the gear so you can review it. So thank you so much to give me the opportunity to get this camera before uh, the launch so I can speak about it. So, uh, so thank you. Let's carry on. Many reviews uh, always speak about positive points and they finish sometimes with the negative or even sometimes don't even speak about it but i prefer to start with the negative reaction why because this is probably what most people who are bashing om system uh, for many years will uh, speak about okay so i prefer to start with this and then we get over it and then we uh, get into the camera okay so my very honest reaction when i received the camera I opened the box i got it out of the box and my reaction was oh they sent me the wrong camera it's the old one and then i looked i saw om system here om5 so I was like, what? that's strange, what, what's going on here? Basically, this is the first camera that's called OM System. Uh, the OM one uh, kept the Olympus name as uh, uh, an homage to uh, the first OM one, okay? And it wrote OM one here. But this one is the first camera to bear the name OM System and OM5. Do you launch a new camera just because you change the name? Obviously, no. So this is why. Uh, we're going to get into the video and speak in what's inside the camera what's new and speak about the philosophy of this camera so let's continue well bad luck it started to rain so i have to uh, stand here okay it's not as nice well uh before uh receiving the camera and when once i received it i spoke with uh, the director of marketing uh, with a video uh, conference because I wanted to know more information. First, he had sent me a, a PDF with the specs because obviously I cannot get into the website and check the specs because this camera is not out yet, okay? And uh, I wanted to know uh, what was the idea of this camera. Why this camera? How, what, uh, what is the public, the cl potential clients and, and all this. And basically he said, well, listen, uh, this camera is the camera everyone wants to carry around. This is idea. This is this public. This person that says, uh, I go traveling. I cannot bring a big camera. I don't want to bring all my massive gear, whether it's other format or on an M1, or M1 or, or, or MD1 Mark III or big things like this. I want something, not a compact camera, but still a small package uh, and that's easy to use, okay? And uh, I thought, yeah, that, that's right. Many people contact me and say, oh, Eric, what camera would you recommend? Uh, for many years, I've uh, recommended the OM OMD uh, 5, the OMD 10 for, for this to carry around easy, okay? And this is also the idea why they said, uh, I'm going to send you, but well, before sending, he told me he was sending it with the 12 to 45 millimeter F4 because it is compact, it's a nice lens, and uh, also tested it with my 8 to 25 millimeter that I will review soon on my channel. I bought it uh, like a month ago, something like this. So to see if the philo philosophy was there, okay? And honestly, uh, this week in Metz, I've tested several cameras, a uh, lot larger cameras, Sony, uh, Fujifilm, uh, Nikon, really big package. And also have my OM-1, okay? And I must say that to walk around, make pictures like souvenir or even nice pictures, landscape, whatever, or for people who walk around, this is probably the best package I had in my hand, okay? So we're going uh, to uh, see uh, the technical side of it and I will explain uh, what I think could be better or what I expect it to be better and what I think is brilliant, okay? So let's continue with this uh, visit of this camera. I hope it will stop raining. So I can go out again. Maybe the sound is not as good, but I had just a few days to record. So uh, I've, I have no choice. I have to record here, okay? First of all, uh, I think many people will probably compare with the OMD uh, 5 Mark III. Uh, there is a, a saying in Spanish that says uh, comparing is something hateful. And I think that's true. It feels uh, makes feels uh, people when they're compared not too happy, okay? So uh, 
I will maybe refer to some point to the predecessor, but first of all, the, the OMD 5 Mark III was a brilliant camera, really great camera. So this one is equal or at least better, okay? Or at least equal or probably better. So this is what we're going to see, okay? But my idea is to speak about this camera, not being comparing all the time. Maybe in few points I will do, but let's speak about this one, okay? So uh, let's so we get this out of the way and see what this camera has to offer how it is now what the uh, what has bettered what is in there okay so let's carry on i could uh, show you the camera and details all this but this is pointless because it's exactly the same body as the om5 uh, omd5 mark 3 i'll leave you a link here of when i reviewed it so you can have a look at it okay but still i think i want to straight the point on two things or three things that how surprised is not changed first i think they could have made some minor uh difference in look because it will like uh place uh the new identity in there uh, maybe change a bit the grip a bit rounder whatever uh, like a mini om1 maybe not as far-fetched as the om1 which is a brilliant camera but something a bit more okay and second one thing I do not understand at all is there is still a micro USB. So that's nonsense. Uh, there's a new law now uh, in Europe, in the Union, uh, European Union. So USB-C is going, going to be compulsory. So I don't know why they didn't change it yet, okay? And the last thing I, th I was expecting to be changed, really, is the menu system. With the OM1, they have a brilliant menu system, really a lot better than we always had before. And on this one, they still have the old menu system. So I wish uh, they, they, they would have uh, fixed that, new menus, USB-C, and maybe a slight different look. Not a different look completely, but because it has to be a, a five-line a, a five uh, look, I think, okay? But still, maybe the grip is different or something to, to say, we knew, we, we here, we OM system, okay? But okay, let's see what's inside. Well, I imagine then by the year 2022, you already know that uh, OM system uses a format called Micro Four Third. Uh, the sensor has 20 million pixel resolution and the processor is Trupix 9. I don't think, but well, I know it's not the same sensor as on the OM1. Honestly, I think this is the same sensor as the OM5 Mark III. And uh, some people will say, yeah, yeah, but so it's not new. It has some, some years now. Well, relax. I mean, if Fujifilm JFX 50 has been using the same sensor for six years and uh, Hasselblad X1D also, uh, honestly, it's not a drama as long as the rest is getting better, which is the case. So we're going to, to have a look at this, okay? So uh, there are other brands that speak about uh, uh, everyday camera, uh, carry anywhere camera, travel camera. But uh, the philosophy is easy to have. The difficulty is to get a uh, package and what's in there, okay? I must say this camera is probably the only one with this philosophy that offers uh, high-end uh, quality computational uh, photography, uh, high-res, many things we're going to see. Like weather seal, here I'm not weather seal myself, the camera is, I could be outdoor, uh, outside there, okay? But uh, if you look at it, it's weatherproof, IP53, you can use it uh, down to uh, minus 10 degrees Celsius. Fantastic, fantastic. Means you can really go anywhere with it, even if it's uh, raining, dusty, or whatever, okay? And then there is one thing they've improved a lot. It is the, uh, the IBIS, the stabilization. Uh, I think before it was 6.5 uh, stops, and now it's 7.5 stops. It means you can use it without gimbal when you record video. I show you right now a test I've made, and I think this is impressive. It looks like the camera is on rails and goes like this. Look at it. Testing IBIS, I'm walking slowly at waist level. The sound you hear is directly from the camera microphone and street sound uh, around, okay? Well, same test as I do with any camera, the way I walk, everything. Before speaking about uh, computational uh, photography, we're going to speak about uh, simple things. Uh, other brand that has maybe a similar philosophy, do they offer so many things in such a package? But something that simple, like shutter speed, this one is up to one eight thousandth of a second, when uh, usually you find on one four thousandth of a second, if we speak about mechanical shutter. On the electronic shutter, it's one thirty-two thousandth of a second, which is uh, really fast. It means uh, even in a pro use, you can perfectly use this camera 
uh, as a professional and it will not stop you uh, stop you from doing what you need to do so really uh, when you look at it we're speaking about a different world okay well it's easy to say you can bring this camera everywhere it's where the proof all this all that but you sometimes need to clean the sensor and uh, uh, OM system and before Olympus is the king of uh, dust cleaning uh, I have two OM5 Mark II and uh, in seven years I never clean the sensor so it's good news it means sometimes you will have to change lenses and maybe some dust get in and to have a brilliant sensor cleaner is uh, really important so you see we speak about really a tough uh, gear that can really go anywhere in any situation obviously to carry anywhere everywhere the ideal is to have something that is small and light 414 grams the body okay and the size is 12 and a half uh, centimeters here and something like eight something here and wow that thick as you can see not much okay so this is really a camera you can bring everywhere some people with really large hands maybe that's a problem for them but i think someone who needs a camera that type knows that there's no other choice that if it's small if you have big hands it's a bit more difficult so the same the other way around with people with small hands and big cameras so i think this is exactly the right size for this philosophy sometimes people see like 20 million pixels and they feel that that's too little well no problem with that there is a high res option two high res option one is handheld you get actually 50 million pixel the way it works the sensor moves uh, half a pixel in uh, several direction and make eight pictures and get them together and held you get 50 million pixels and if you want to do it on a tripod then you get even more pixels so there's no excuse uh, the moment you need uh, extra resolution you have it on this camera no problem nowadays we cannot speak about photography without speaking about video and when we speak about someone who can carry this camera anywhere anytime uh, any place uh, it sounds like uh, an advert we know okay um, obviously you cannot uh, forgive them around uh, the video side of it i mean it's important okay but we guess up by the end there's a really good point you can uh, connect to the app and do vertical video and upload straight to uh, social media like instagram or tiktok or whatever so it's great for some people uh, all the er people youtuber tiktoker instagrammer to have their uh, Facebooker maybe <laughs> you have directly your uh, vertical video so this is a big plus okay let's add now the more classical video in 4k you get 30 25 and 24 uh, frame per second in full HD you get 60 50 30 25 and 24 plus slow motion of 120 100 frame per second which is perfect but some people they want to do some uh, fine tuning in post-production and they need a special low uh, contrast profile to colorize their video in post-production well here you have it the om log 400 which is fantastic and something else if you are the guy that is traveling or the girl who is traveling and at any time needs to do anything uh, video wise you can also connect this camera directly to your usb port of your computer and then what do you get a webcam direct webcam so this is ideal for anything you want to do video side okay so what is this computational uh, photography well with the high res already uh, said a bit but let's speak about more things let's say you walk around and here you see some small waves that doesn't that much today okay but let's say uh, well i'll show you an example here on the picture like a, a fountain okay well you would like to do some long exposure but you don't have ND filter with you you don't have a tripod so what can you do well you have the live nd which which simulates uh, having an nd filter up to four stop uh, any nd16 on uh handheld okay so this is brilliant uh, i don't have to carry anything with me i can make this picture okay uh, obviously this is not a real nd it doesn't cut light it simulates okay it means that if you were thinking of using uh, this with a uh, flash photography that's not the idea the idea is to simulate the result okay but that's really practical you walk around and you can have you can have this simulated long exposure photography then you have a feature called live composite this is the feature that really convinced me uh, seven years ago to start to use olympus cameras and here on with om system obviously you still have it and what is it well live composite let's say i make a picture of this the first it makes it, it adds picture one by one okay and it keeps what doesn't change and adds what's new so it means if it was nighttime for example i would get picture of this and then the stars well today's cloudy impossible i could not do with stars because it was cloudy all the time okay 
you would see the trace of these of the stars because uh, the rotation of earth bad news for some it's not flat i guess <laughs> it means there is a rotation so you would see the star trace for example and it will add uh, keep the exposure for the first uh, part and add the rest okay or uh, let's say i do a product photography i want to alloy paint it or uh, whatever uh, a waterfall or or, or or light painting whatever so live composite is brilliant for that you also have light time and light bulb which are fantastic feature for long exposure also and then there's a feature called pro capture and uh, here sees these uh, birds I was uh, off pressing uh, the shutter it starts making picture and when I fully press it ends up the burst rate uh, the, the the burst of picture okay it means uh, you can capture at 30 frames per second so it's impossible to miss uh, the action you are ready you're already making picture even if you uh, press a bit late or a bit too early you get it okay so this is really a fantastic feature so it means with this computational photography you can do anything with this camera uh, there is no limit to your uh, creativity or uh, for any situation okay the autofocus uh, it's face detection it, it detects uh, very well everything and uh, honestly i think it's better than before 121 points but i think it works better and there is one feature i really like it's called starry sky it means for people uh, uh starry 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 stars okay for people who do night sky and they want to uh, point at uh, at stars it's really important to get the the, the focus uh, properly done okay so you have a feature that does that for you so yeah fantastic i i, th I think yeah honestly i think uh, i went in uh, dark areas nighttime daytime against lights uh, yeah it worked really fine i think is i think it's better now let's speak about the point that most people criticize um, because most people uh, ignore what really uh, is uh, micro four third when you do low light photography people start to speak about uh, ISO and the problem with high ISO that is no good all this all that first of all on a micro four third uh, sensor you should not underexpose. you should uh, expose properly or just overexpose a bit okay because this is when you're going to uh, mm, uh, put more light in post-production then you will see some noise otherwise that's fine okay but anyway why is it not a problem then well basically because when uh, one thing is theory one thing is uh, real life if I am if I am my full-frame camera I'm going to make a picture at night time open completely uh, the aperture of my lens I've got a really short depth of field and maybe it's not possible I need to get a bit more maybe I need to be on f4 but on my micro four third uh, the depth of field i get with f4 i get it with f2 uh, so it means that i've got four times more light it means i don't have to put my iso as high as on the full frame camera and second if there is no action photography no action in the situation then i can drop my speed a lot because the ibis is incredible i've seen many people doing a one even three second picture with the uh, on, uh, on m system camera I've got no problem with one second, but it's a bit risky, but one quarter, one fifteenth, fifteenth, one fifteenth, no problem at all. It means many situations will be easy to get the, 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 the right picture without pushing the ISO and you get uh, no problem with noise, no problem with uh, low light photography. Actually, if you look at the picture here, there is no difference with the one I've made with other cameras that are a lot more expensive, a lot more high-end. And uh, I was in low light too with the uh, OM system, OM5, and no problem at all. So I think that that's easy. Most people who criticize uh, ISO on the Micro Four Third, they simply don't know how to use it, the camera. And they push uh, ISO when they actually don't need to do it, okay? So my conclusion, well, I've got two different conclusions. One is the camera itself. Okay, what do I think about this camera? Well, honestly, if I was recommending the OM5 Mark III two days ago, obviously, I can only recommend this one too. Uh, some people will say, yeah, but they could have better things and that and this and that. Well, listen, four years ago or three years ago, do you think they were lighting at night this in a different way than today? So if the camera we had before could make the picture, it can still make it today. So there are things that do not need to be bettered okay because they're already good so uh, i understand that some people always expect something better better but better than best is nonsense you're spending extra money for nothing okay so 
I don't have complaint on this, okay? What I think, they, I'm a bit disappointed, my first reaction was negative, was I would have expected a different look, okay? A slight bit different look, not a completely different look, slight bit. And also to have uh, the new menu system, yes, I wanted the new menu system, and also USB-C. This was the side, I thought like, wow, they could have made that better, okay? So, the camera is completely recommendable as it is, okay? It's a uh, great gear, great uh, camera, you can do anything with it, and it really matched the philosophy they were telling me. This camera is for that, to go anywhere, anytime, okay? But then I've got a conclusion also on the strategy for OM system. Although it's not my business, I think they made a massive mistake, okay? Why? Because we all know that uh, Micro Four Third is having tough time uh, by his competitors criticizing very often with, uh, uh, with uh, things that are not true, okay? But still, uh, we need to get them shut up, okay? Why? Because uh, they will criticize that it's uh, the same body, they will criticize that it's the same menu, they will criticize that it is the same uh, USB, uh, micro USB. So I think it was important, it was a great opportunity to say, OM system is here, this is the new OM5, uh, there are some substantial changes, uh, the way it looks, maybe the grip, or maybe the, the, the here, this part, or whatever. So, uh, these people who are always negative about the company, they could not say anything. Right now, many of them will not bother using the camera and see that, yes, the autofocus is better, yes, uh, the, uh, the IBS is better, they will not bother with that. They will just say, this is the same camera with a different name. And I think it's a pity to give them the opportunity to be able to say that, okay? So I hope there will be soon a Mark II with different look, different everything, uh, not everything, different few things that makes it look different in everything, okay? But what's in there is brilliant. It was already brilliant before, and it's still brilliant, and they've bettered it, okay? So I think, yes, it's a recommendable camera, but please, OM system, uh, you have many enemies, you need to work more on impressing uh, competitors. Your, your faithful clients like me will keep buying it, okay? No problem with that. But this is for other people who always on uh, social networks criticize and you cannot give them this opportunity. You need it to, be, to make a few changes, okay? So, that's it. Thank you so much, OM System Europe, for sending me the camera. Thank you, Mark. And thank you so much to uh, you for watching the video. If you feel it may interest other people, please share it on social networks. If you have not done it yet, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. A small button down here is a small bell. If you click on the bell, get notified when I upload a new video. My website, ericgibo.com. If you have any question, can leave a comment below. I'll also leave you links of Moggy on Amazon, links of everything reviewed by KF Concepts and Mark, and flashes by Westcott and also a link to my PayPal account in case you wanted to make a donation. Thank you so much. Have a good day. Bye.